the seeds that are planted inside everybody's soul must grow. Whether you've never heard it, but you've had a moment where you've heard something inside that has been bigger than everything on the outside. And when you connect and you come from that place, the world could be crumbling around outside you, but the place that you come from inside, this home that you have, this Olympic flame that never goes out. Hello, Ranjan. Hi, Devesh. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I wanted to just drop in and say it from my body. I'm good. How are you? I'm good, Devesh. Thank you so much. Hi, Devesh. Welcome to Moments with Masters. Thank you so much for joining. And before uh, we dive into our conversation, let me introduce you to my audience. Devesh specialization in emotional intelligence and personal transformation for mission-driven leaders, helping them co-create a life that's a full expression of someone's reason for being. One which doesn't just look good on the outside, but feels good on the inside. Over the past seven years, Devesh has worked with mission-driven leaders, including actors, Olympic athletes, seven and eight figure business owners, guiding them to use their greatest strengths to reach a higher potential. Devesh is committed to bringing in the new wave of leadership. There are too many managers in the world and not enough leaders, too much knowledge in the world and not enough wisdom, and too many people who are homeless in their own heart. The highest level of work that Devesh is called to is to help people reconnect to the core of their being, to be at home in their own heart and to take that home with them everywhere they go. So they become a living, breathing example of mission-driven leadership. There is a song inside everyone waiting to be sung. Devesh's mission is to activate the leaders of today and tomorrow into their highest alignment and to a higher potential so we may collectively redefine what leadership means together. Welcome, Devesh. And as the name of uh, this show suggests, Moments with Masters, you are the master of the day. Thank you for seeing me and thank you for inviting me into your home. It's great to be here. Devesh, uh, you know, let me start uh, with your intro. And uh, <clears throat> I would love to listen about what is being a mission-driven leader in the first place, since you work to co-create them, what in your experience is being a mission-driven leader? Well, first of all, everybody's a leader and everybody's here on a mission. Sometimes the mission is to collectively come together and be a part of a bigger mission. Sometimes the mission is just to exist. But what I strongly believe is that there's a quote that I always remember, and I think we spoke about this when we first spoke, Ranjan. The seeds that are planted inside everybody's soul must grow. The seeds that are planted inside everybody's soul. When you came into this human experience, there were seeds planted inside you. And life comes along with a watering can and it waters those seeds. And it's not up to us to know when they come out. We don't even know what the seeds are. But they're inside us and we're meant to discover them. There's a knock at the door to our heart. Everybody, there's a knock at the door to your heart. Whether it's a little bit, whether it's very loud. Whether you've never heard it, but you've had a moment where you've heard something inside that has been bigger than everything on the outside. And when you connect and you come from that place, the world could be crumbling around outside you. But the place that you come from inside, this home that you have, this Olympic flame that never goes out, when you connect and you come from that place, you are a living, breathing embodiment of your mission. Not by what you do, 
but you're at home with yourself. So when you speak, when you talk, when you are present, when you breathe, when you just are without saying a single word, your presence speaks louder than words. Your personal sense of mission. It's something that cannot be defined by words. It's not something that can be bottled up. It's something that you come from. And I don't care how big it is, if it's to be a loving father, to be an example of a new wave of leadership for a million people, to simply just exist and enjoy life, that could be your mission. But when you come from the core of that truth, you are leading with your personal sense of mission. And then we can start everything else. But if we can't start being at home with who we are, then we can't be the leader that we already are. That's what I believe is mission-driven leadership is just existing and being at home with all of who you are and starting from there. Beautiful, Devesh. Uh, Devesh, I believe that there are two sides of the story. You know, my, my, the first the first declaration of my document is I'm conscious creation. And I think we shared this in our conversation when I shared that I realized that I am a conscious creation, I think in 1997, but it took me 25 years to start declaring that I'm a conscious creation. But if I go back, if I travel back in time, I realized that uh, it was in 1997 that I realized I got connected and got in touch with that seed that I am. And I started watering it. And the life before that, I can say that 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 was a disconnected life or, or that I was not home and I was not connected to my authentic self. But on the other side, I can say that life was preparing me for that moment, that near-death experience that I shared with you, which, which connected me to my larger self and, and the space that I could tap into if I come from that space. So Devesh, when did you, what's your story? When did, mm. when did you get in touch with that seed in you? When you just said the words, larger self, man, it was like, You use my words. And here's the thing. They're not my words. Words, you know, people say that thoughts exist in your mind, but they don't exist in your mind. They What if they exist in a field of information that we're all tapping into? We're only brought together because we're tuned into the same radio stations. We're just two radios. We're so in resonance, man. And first of all, I just want to say, Ranjan, it's been an absolute pleasure connecting with you. The moment I spoke to you, we, have a, we had a real conversation. And... Um, that's what we start from, what's real. So I firstly just want to acknowledge for creating this space, even five minutes into this, I can, the words that you're using, I, I can feel the energy, the aliveness, and because you are creating this space, you are an invitation. Um, thank you for creating this space. Thank you for letting me in. And thank you for sharing your story. I don't know if, if, if you share that with others with your spiritual awakening, but um, what actually happened to me, this is... Um, the moment where I connected to my larger being. Uh, up until the age of 10, I lived in India. So I'll give you a quick recap to what led up to it. Up until the age of 10, I lived in India and I was always, you know, the second Devesh. Even when I was in school, there were two Deveshes and one was the smart Devesh, one was the other Devesh, which was me. I wasn't academically tuned. I was always... I wanted to draw, I wanted to write, I wanted to explore, I wanted to create. And I was always beaten into submission to not do those things. And then when I was 10, I moved to Australia. And, uh, you know, I was the only Indian kid in my school. When I went to high school, I was the only Indian kid in my entire grade. So I used to get singled out in the beginning. And I'd learned how to fit in by turning off my Indianness, by turning off a part of myself to be accepted. But my whole life, I believed that I was a second-class citizen. I believe that there was something wrong with me. I had to work harder to fit in. I had to work harder to belong. I had this story that I'm rejected by my own people and I'm rejected by Western society. But what that gave me was 
a choice. It gave me a choice that to find the power inside me to be with my emotions, to look at what's going on, to separate myself from being a failure, from not succeeding at something. I just realized that if I was never good enough for anybody, then it's separating myself from the venture that failed, from the meeting the expectation that failed. And I always found a way to back myself. And, you know, I spent 10 years in corporate. You know, I had six different career changes. And when I was, in, when I was 29 years old, I'm 38 now. When I was 29, uh, I remember a very good friend of mine, Emmanuel, he took me to um, a Tony Robbins event. This sounds really cliche, but I'd never been to a Tony Robbins event. But I basically was at this point in my life where I'd worked hard. I kept ditching my career, starting all over again. But every single time I got a promotion, guess what? For me to succeed in a corporate ladder, I had to be less of myself for me to go ahead. The further up I got, the less of myself I had to be. And I didn't want to live that way. All of my life, I'd been trying to live up to someone else's expectation and whatever I did for a living it had to allow me to facilitate to be more of who I am not be less of who I am if making more money means being less of who I am that's a demotion for me and I just couldn't find a job where I could do that so when I was 29 I went to this Tony Robbins event and I'd never been to a place like this and I remember something happened at this place that was that really just changed me forever up until that point I always felt there was something inside me I felt like there was something pushing inside here but I, but I couldn't let it out I couldn't give it shape and I'm tapping into what that felt like and I always the way I used to explain it was there was this huge ball of energy and I felt like I'm just holding it back and it's wanting to come through but I don't know how to let it out and at this Tony Robbins event on the third day there was a moment where all the lights were off where he asked everybody to close their eyes and imagine that they were going through this journey through your timeline and you're pulling out all this black stuff and I remember in that moment I closed my eyes and I imagined all this black stuff coming from my past timelines. And all of a sudden I saw multiple timelines and I saw this black stuff just coming out of these timelines. And I remember lighting a torch and setting the whole thing on fire and the whole thing just exploded in my mind. I remember there's something that happened in that moment. The whole thing exploded and all of a sudden I had my eyes closed and I had tears streaming down my eyes. My nose was running. I was just shivering. And I didn't know what was going on because it was like, I just felt this energy explosion. And all of a sudden, even though the room was pitch black, I opened my eyes for a millisecond. And all I saw was nothing but just pure, bright, white light. It was like a millisecond, but it was, I opened my eyes and the whole room was pitch black with 5,000 people, but it was pure white light. And this is going to sound a bit crazy, but I've told this story so many times. If you know me, you've heard the story. 5,000 people in front of me, I saw beams of light coming out of people's head, going all the way up to the ceiling. And it was this image. It was real. It wasn't real, but it was real. I saw it. And in that moment, I realized that we all think that we're separate. But there's 5,000 people in this room and there's beams of light coming out of their forehead. And guess what they're making? They're making the shape of a giant beam. So imagine that there's people on the floor and then there's lights coming out of their head and it's making the shape of a giant being, but the giant being was so big that in this giant arena, I could only see the left part of its shoulder and the bottom part of its chin. It's like, this was the ceiling, this was the floor, and there were all these people with light. And it was like a blueprint. It was like an image that I saw, but I didn't see it. I didn't hear it. I, I can't explain how I saw it, but I was there. It's like, I saw it. And in that moment, this whole idea that I'm here trying to figure out what my life is, I'm trying to figure out what to do for my job, what to do for my career, how much money I'm making. And I realize every single thing in the universe is having a full-blown conscious experience. In my body right now, there's billions and trillions of bacteria and amoeba that are having their full-blown conscious experience. They are alive and they think that they're all separate from the bacteria next to them. But I only exist because I am a byproduct of all those millions of bacteria living their life. And I just realized that we come in here and we get stuck in this identity. There's so much more to life. How can I define myself just by the human experience? How can I just define myself by these expectations? I remember after that event, everything changed. Everything changed. The way I perceived the world when I came home, my family was like, what's, what's different about you? But I just literally realized all of this stuff that I was stuck in, I didn't have to be stuck in. I went home, everybody had a goal. Everybody had a goal. I'm gonna leave my job, I'm gonna leave a coach. I didn't have that. I literally just left it. I said, I only have two goals. Number one, to be the master of the moment. 
and number two, to be the master of momentum. What that means is if I can just come back to here, if I come back to this moment where everything around me just switches off and I drop into this pin drop of this infinite ocean that is alive inside me, I can take a pause. I can dip into this endless ocean of infinite wisdom. And when I'm there, I'm in tune with everything. And when I come from that place, I bring the everything with me. And I just wanted more of those moments. And if I can come back to this moment, then right now can be the start of anything that I want. It doesn't matter who I was yesterday. It doesn't matter who I am tomorrow. Right now can be the start of anything that I want. And that's what I became committed to creating every single day. The master of my moment, master of momentum. Within one year of that, I had left my job. Within one year of that, I'd made $120,000 my very first year of coaching. And I didn't market. I didn't advertise. All I did was share from my heart. I felt like I took steps off the ledge and the ground materialized beneath my feet because I felt like I was in rhythm with the harmony of life itself. And I was doing life's work. I was doing the work that I came here to do because of this place that I was coming from. And that changed my paradigm the whole, this whole time. I struggled. Who? What's this other person doing? What are they calling themselves? And I realized I didn't have to follow any of that. I could make this up. I could be at the center of my universe. And if I was at the center of my universe, then the planets must come and rotate around me. I'm a creator. So that's what I started with. And it sounded crazy, but that was so loud. I wanted to explore it. That was eight years ago. I've been doing coaching full time since. And I'm just learning more and more about exactly what I'm sharing with you today by teaching it to others and being a student. So hopefully that was a long-winded response, but it answered your question. It did. Um, thank you so much for sharing that story of how you got connected to that seed of divinity, which unites all of us, Devesh. I remember Devesh, you know, uh, the last 25 years of journey, although on a, on a, at a level I call, I called it often as a chase journey where I would chase the goals on the outside. But if I look back, it was not, it was not completely a chase journey because I, I still, if I look back, I realized that every one year or two years when I would be trapped in outside in um, thinking, life would do something and I would fall back. I would fall back into myself. And it, you know, it, there were chunks of long pauses. Uh, mm -hmm. and some pauses were about a year or a two when on the outside, uh, it, it was kind of people didn't, people didn't understand what I was doing. But on the inside, I knew what was happening and who I was creating myself into. And it happened every three years, every four years. And I, I remember those phases. And today, I believe that those pauses were the actual phases of my life, which was preparing me for the next part of the journey. And every time I got uh, misaligned and, and I lost myself, life would bring me back to my core and it, it, it could happen because of an incident outside but I believe that everything that happened on the outside was my own asking and my own my own desire because I, deep inside I know who I want to be and who know I want know I know who I want to create myself into and every every time I got lost in the outside in I would, you know, something would happen on the outside and, it, you know, I would come back uh, because of something that happened on the outside to my core. And it it, it could, you know, uh, in the moment, it might have seemed like a depression or it might have looked like something else or, but then I know that the phase after that would be completely different. The phase after the, I would, I would be a totally, you know, uh, you know, I think about, uh, I think in 1997 or 98, I was uh, involved in alternative therapies and energy work and, you know, Reiki and pranic healing and everything. And that's when I realized, that's when I experienced that, you know, you can, you can rebirth yourself 
you know in, in the same physical body and you know, sometimes the phase lasts for seven years and and you are still rebirthing yourself but i found if i look back that there have been many such instances in my life when i when it was a new life for me and i was a totally different self i was a totally new self so but then there were many things which were supporting which i was taking support for to learn and grow and evolve myself into the newer ranjan kumar so how did what what were what was your learning journey like you know how did how, what were your choices like uh, in this path of inside out leadership such a great question ranjan and i think um i really think it's it's walking the tightrope and i think the image that i had in my mind is man you know imagine that you're standing on top of two buildings and you're on the top of the highest building that you've been on and there's one building here and there's another building here and there's a tightrope that walks between both those buildings and to cross the human journey it's being it's there comes a point in your life where you become you don't even know that there's another building right and then you're like there's another building but to get to the other side you have to then practice composure and learn the fine art of balancing between the physical and the non-physical so you don't tip over the edge because it's very easy to get lost in the philosophy and in, in the being of this and what i've really found over time is you know when i pause i'm just getting an analogy drop in and i just let it come so if i'm pausing it's not because i'm stuck i'm just coming back and i just got a beautiful image of airwaves alongside and you know the beautiful metaphor that's coming through is the music's in the air you know but when we switch the radio station we we, we switch in but here's the thing if your radio if your circuitry hasn't isn't ready to handle the music you will not be able to transmute what's in the air and express it in real time so i think life is about being in tune with the something that's there but then also working on your circuitry so that in real time you can tune in and you can transmute the music you can transmute the unseen into the seen through physical expression in real time by feeling what is and bringing it to life that is creation that is thought that is comprehension that is awareness that is conversation that is creation everything is the ability to transmute what is in real time by being present in the moment and to encapsulate the fullness of what's available and to express it in a way that is true to the form that you're feeling expressed into the physical and if you can do that that is the starting point of everything otherwise we get stuck in who i am who i should be when i wake up in the morning the photo on the wall reminds me of who i should be when i sit on this desk the chair that i'm sitting on rem- reminds me of who i am but no right now is the start of anything that i want right now is the start of everything that i want i'm at the center of my universe and the analogy really is is that there's music that's playing everywhere if we can't tune in then we can't drop in and express what is in real time and um i'm going sorry i'm going to connect this back to the question that you asked me um can you remind me of the question again i'm sorry i've kind of gone off on a tangent uh please remind me of your question again <laughs> this is super embarrassing how did uh, that's absolutely okay and the, uh, you know maybe any path is a great path as long as we are on the path and the path is inside so yeah so the, i mean what i wanted to know is like how was your learning journey and mm-hmm. beautiful What? okay thank you i got yeah. so lost in the analogy of of the tightrope and the learning journey really is is that when i first left my job you know i thought i could do coaching and i could teach this to people and i started enjoying myself but guess what just like you're walking the tightrope you start walking on the tightrope the wind's coming and the money's coming and everything's there the people are starting to follow you and like you and follow your stuff and you get lost in that you really get lost in it and then you start going to business coaches and the business coach will tell you 
you've got to do it like this. You've got to do X, Y, Z. And I tried following it for a while, but the more I did that, I noticed my income started dipping. I started enjoying myself less. I started going more towards group coaching programs, started to put together more speaking things, started to create more content. And then I realized I just lost my soul. I lost my soul in the whole thing. I just did not enjoy what I was doing anymore. And it got to the point where I would be putting out content every single day for four years. I was posting in groups. I was traveling around the world. I was posting content. I was posting stuff every single day. I had a private group with 500 people and I would be in there all the time. And then one day I just disappeared. And people are like, what the hell happened to Zavesh? He disappeared off the face of the planet because I lost my reason for doing it. That inner fire that I had, I lost it. Because guess what? I was trying to cross from one side to the other and I, and I fell off. I went into a chasm. I don't know where the hell I was. I woke up and I'm like, I'm bruised, I'm battered. How the hell did I go from the top of the building down, crashing on the floor? I had lost my soul. I was homeless in my own heart. And then I realized there's so many good people that are doing this, that feel this calling alive inside them, and they get lost. And guess what? If you don't have this feeling inside, you don't really know what you're missing. But to have this feeling inside, to have this aliveness that just brings you to life and you put everything on the line, you start coaching people, you start doing all of this stuff. And then you realize, man, I'm too worried about the money that's coming in, the clients, what my image looks like. And now you're homeless in your own heart. And you're the one who's meant to have it together leading people. That's where I was. And it felt like shit. Really felt bad. This is where the journey really began. That was three and a half years ago, four years ago. I disappeared. And then what I noticed was, you take yourself everywhere you go. You can't run away from who you are. You can't run away from who you are. When I wasn't coaching, I would just go and speak at a coffee shop. I'd be having a conversation with somebody. And, you know, I would get like a business opportunity. Uh, I would be doing something totally random. I would just meet the right person at the right place at the right time. Uh, I would be thinking about coaching. And I'm like, you know what? I would really love to coach this person. I shit you not, the next day I got a phone call from someone I hadn't spoken to in five years that are like, hey man, my business partner needs a coach. Can you speak to this person? I'm thinking, here I am this whole time. I was energetically holding on to, I've got to be like this. I've got to be more visible. I've got to be on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook for four and a half years. I don't post stuff. I have no shortage of clients. People refer, stuff just comes in. But I had to let go of the idea of what I needed to do for things to work, for things to work. And that's what I realized, is that when you are here, if, you're, if my mission is simply to live a deeply connected, meaningful life, that is my vision. It could change every day, but right now, the words that are true is to live a deeply connected, meaningful life. So my role is, every single interaction that I have, is to leave people feeling a little, more, little bit more deeply connected with what's meaningful. I can do that when I go to a coffee shop. I can do that when I have a coaching conversation. I can do that when I come on a podcast. My goal is that by the end of this call, people are just more deeply connected in a meaningful way to whatever's more deeply connected and meaningful for them. And if I can do that, then I'm a living, breathing embodiment of my mission. And that's all I have to be. I just have to come from a place because everything is a magnet. I'm a magnetic force. A magnet either pulls things towards it or it pushes things away. I just took this whole thing very seriously. So now I just have to be home in all of this, in this big, beautiful vessel that I get to call home. I get to be home in all of this, and I get to emanate the beauty of the magnetic resonance of me being at home with myself. And whatever is ready for this, whatever is in resonance with this, will reveal itself to me. But when it does, it's up to me to have the presence and the conviction to stand firm and say, yes, I created this, I give my best, so I deserve the best, and I'm letting this in. I'm not hoping, I'm not praying, I'm, I'm not even receiving. I'm not a beggar. I'm creating this and I'm claiming what is rightfully mine. And I can do that without any hangups. That I'm aware. Well, actually, no, I have many hangups. Let's just be real about that. I have many hangups. But I can do that in spite of my hangups. And the fact that I've gotten to this place means anybody can get to this place. And that's magic. That's the best part about all of this. Absolutely, Devesh. And, and... Right. You know, the moment the moment you are available, the moment you are in your own space, in your own home, it's like you are connected to everything in this universe. And the moment you have, you are in that zone, the first thing that I noticed is that, uh, as you also shared, you start attracting new connections. You start attracting everything that was meant to be, and you, you, 
you don't maybe you take one or steps here and there but you're not chasing them you're not running after them but then all of a sudden you think you you experience those serendipitous moments when when you you know some somebody you come across somebody and that leads to something else and which creates a new experience for you which which you feel that you really wanted to experience that which is so much aligned with you and i would like to take a you know a moment to acknowledge uh, vamshi polymetla who introduced us and and i have i have seen this you know uh, hundreds of such connections that i've created and how those connections have created new journeys together and and meaningful moments that have happened in in many different forms and but then you know something else comes to me at this moment when i was just about a few minutes ago i was just having a cup of coffee and i i felt that you know something came to me and a thought was that you know what you're feeling in the moment is an interpretation of what you're experiencing or or your co-creation of the experience in the moment but beneath that we f- tend to forget that we are equipped with a choice in that moment and your being availability can be a conscious creation it can be a choice and it's more about your decision than a whole set of exercises to be done and then when you decide to be available it's more like life is unfolding the way it wants to through you and then what was meant to happen would happen through you in the way it is supposed to happen instead of us creating it in a way we want it to happen so how has been your experience of the life since you have started being available to yourself and how has that impacted your entire experience of life mm. you know this is such a great topic and uh this is once again the tight rope is co-creating with life letting the experience come and then actually imagine a piece of clay right you have a pottery wheel i, I love this analogy I- i'm very big on metaphors and analogies okay this is going to be in a book of metaphors and stories that i'm writing it's this thing about the pottery wheel so imagine that you're you're a potter right i mean i don't know what it's like to be a potter but imagine you're a potter and you have this wheel and you're turning the wheel and this wheel is spinning and life is kind of like those three stages okay i'm i'm writing a book about this this story okay it's about this guy who's a potter so basically there's a pottery wheel and those pottery wheels are like your foundations your personal inner principles when your life is either spinning on your principles there's a liveness there's a zest like my momentum is spinning i can feel the aliveness of what i stand for who i am what i'm really here for not even in the titles or the labels but this is thing that i come from now when that wheel is spinning when life brings a event it's like a piece of clay right it's just a clump of clay when that clump of clay comes if my wheel's not spinning then the clump of clay just sits there but when my inner momentum is alive life will throw something there and it'll be a piece of clay but it'll spin around and i'll mold it in real time i'll mold it in real time and that's what opportunities are like and i'm going to give you an example okay so i'm going to give you an example and this is such a powerful example because it's about coaching and i'm going to speak a little bit about that um when i first left my job this is what happened so in 2014 i had uh, my mentor at the time actually said to me i want you to pull out a piece of paper i want you to write down that in the next 12 months i'm going to three to five times my income otherwise 
I'll never see the person I love the most ever again. And he's like, now, if that was true, would you find a way to make this happen? And I'm like, hell yeah. He's like, well, the only reason you can create anything is not even about the money. You can create anything. And if you don't, it simply means that you just weren't committed to it. Because if that was true, you would do it. So I'm like, I took that really seriously. So over the next, you know, nine, over the next nine, 10 months, I'd done like four different coaching qualifications. I was studying eight hours a day. I was practicing. I was coaching in real time. I was doing everything that I can whilst I was in my corporate job. Um, 12 months later, on the day that I said it would happen, I had quit my job. And on the day, down to the dollar, I got exactly four times what I would have got in my corporate job. In that month, I exactly quadrupled, exactly the amount that I wrote down, down to the dollar. I created that reality. But here was the magical thing. Now I created it. I created the money. The, the money came through. But I had to up-level myself to mold this opportunity into something. I had a friend of mine, I'd coached him. He had, he was a CEO of his own business. I'd coached his mom, I'd coached his sister. And he referred me to a, to his, to his dad. Now his dad was apparently this guy who'd been on TV over a thousand times. This guy's making like $10 million a year. I speak to this guy and I'm like, man, I'm creating this opportunity. Universe is giving me all of this stuff. But guess what I do? My insecurity comes up. I'm like, man, this guy's a multimillionaire. Like how the hell do I support this guy? This was when I was 29. This is when I was 29. And this guy comes on wearing a pinstripe suit. He's just, you know, gives me a copy of his book. He, like, I'm intimidated by this guy. Anyway, I have a conversation with him. I had to learn how to see him as a human being instead of the status and the label. It's not about, this is going to be a great client. and pay me a lot of money. You know, I have to see him as a human being. As I'm sitting there, we have great rapport and I drop in. And we agree to work together. And guess what I quote him? I quote this guy like $100 an hour. I quote him less than what I was charging people at that point. At that point, I was charging about $300 an hour and I just got 100 bucks because he was a multimillionaire and I wanted his business. But guess what he did? For the first three weeks, didn't do his homework, didn't show up, just didn't respond, just didn't respond to me. And then I realized I was getting stuck in the identity. Life gave me an opportunity, but my identity of who I was, who he is, it stops it. So if you think that this is who we should be, this is what I'm ready for, this is what, what I'm not ready for, we just get in the way. And I had to stop and I had to tell him, did you do your homework? And he's like, no. And in that moment, he just kept talking over me, just kept talking. And I said to him, just shut up. I need you to shut the hell up. And nobody had ever spoken to him that way before. And he just looked at me and he just took a step back. And I just said to him, look, I know you're the guy who's used to running the shop, but I need you to shut the hell up. Because quite frankly, you need me more than I need you. And I need you to be the client and I need you to let me be the coach. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time and there's no point of us doing this. And he's like, you know, it was a bit longer than that, but he was just like, okay. And I'm like, and I'm charging you $1,000 an hour. He's like, okay, paid me on the spot. His life transformed. So here's the thing. The lesson in that is that guy was a metaphor for life. You ask, life comes along, but life will act like a big, tough guy because you think that thing is big and tough. So it will treat you that way. But when it does, it brings up your own security. So you in real time can transmute it with awareness and actually take this thing that's been given to you and make it yours and claim your power back. I've had many moments like that. I didn't tell you this story because of how big this guy was, but I'm just telling you because imagine that. Imagine putting the label that I can only charge this. I can only work with this person. Who am I to work with this person? But when that person comes, guess what? It's not about you. It's about them. But we give meaning to all of these things. So, you know, at the end of it, I just think if you come back to who you are beyond the identity, I'm not my body. I'm not my name. I'm not the things that bring me fame or shame. Here and now, absolute presence. That's the aim of the game. I'm a soul talking to another soul. You're just a point of light, my friend. You are a dot. You realize that? You're simply a dot. I'm a dot. You're a dot. When I see you know, my grandmother and I see like a little grandchild. Sometimes the grandchild is older than the grandmother. Sometimes the grandmother's younger than the bloody grandchild. Everybody's, so I almost swore there. Everybody's just a soul. I honor the physical, but who we are is so much more deeper and more expansive than the identity and the labels and the things that we define ourselves with. I could go on forever. And there's one thing I quickly want to say to you. I want to apologize to you, Ranjan. There was a moment that I lost myself earlier when I was walking across the tightrope. 
my logical mindset, I have to come back and ask Ranjan's question. But the reason why I got lost is actually, I saw something, I actually want to share it with you. When I was given the analogy of the tightrope, I literally went from seeing a guy on the tightrope to actually seeing you on the tightrope. And in that moment, what I just wanted to say to you is, Ranjan, I feel like you're at a beautiful place. I didn't even realize I'm talking to somebody that's actually in the middle of, of that tightrope. And I just wanted to, in that moment, I just really want to commend you for this beautiful journey that you're walking on because I've seen you in India. I've seen you put your heart on the line. I've, so, I've seen you pour your soul to the thousands of people that were in attendance. And who else is more of a beautiful representation of the man on the tightrope than you? And I, I had this moment where I wanted to share that with you, but I'm like, no, I've got to go back. I can't go off on a tangent. And that's when I lost my place. But I hadn't really lost my place. What was coming through was that message for you. You are walking the tightrope. And at this point in time, we need people that are walking the tightrope. The smartest minds of our generation are stuck trying to figure out how to get people more stuck to their phone screen. What happened to the artists, the poets, the, the dreamers, the visionaries? We need more people on the tightrope. And I wanted to acknowledge you for being one of those people. Thank you so much, uh, Devesh. This brings me to my purpose of life. And I woke up to this purpose. I, I, I no, I woke up to this purpose 25 years ago, but I I realized that this is my purpose only about four or five years ago. And my purpose is to accelerate inner autonomy. Mm -hmm. And I'm creating a worldwide community of authentic influencers. And I can go back to the day and I can feel the day I, I connected with the purpose of my life. And I declared to myself that this is who I am. And this is what I'm going to create from who I am. I can see how I'm expanding my connections with people across the world. And, and, and I can, I can see, you know, when you come from, there are phases when, when we are not connected, there are phases when something is not working on the outside, but I see that those phases are also helping you upgrade yourselves. And, uh, you know, even in my workshops, transformative workshops and coaching, the first thing that I help people uncover is about their identity. And it's about who they are in the first place that they create that reality. And as Steve Harrison says, this is a, an, an endless journey of being. And, and it, it goes on, it goes on. And we don't even need to know the end of it because we only are more focused on where we are coming from. And, and as long as we know where we are coming from, the creation, you are a co-creator. You just, you just participate in the creation and you know how you're going to interpret the experience of what is created on the outside. Thank you so much for acknowledging uh, me. Uh, but when you talk about corporate life, when you talk about corporate leaders, when we talk about, uh, you know, you know, our experience has been that, you know, e even my experience was similar to you. And I think that's the reason life has brought me back to who I am. And it, it has created a circumstance where I need to upgrade my identity once again. And I have been doing that. And I've been openly sharing about what I've been experiencing in, in the moment. And at the same time, I have full faith in the creation that is happening. And I know that this is going to be magically different from the all these years that I've been here on the planet. What do you, what do you suggest to somebody who just started on this path, has come from a corporate life, has been a leader there or has been aspiring to become a corporate leader. And it's like they're stuck in the outside in game of titles, positions, roles, and 
deadlines, how would you suggest them to start on this inside out leadership? Because it it gives a sense to them that, oh, this, this is about slowing down in life and slowing down doesn't create results. And, and uh, it's all about the last phase of your life on the planet. So we will postpone that to the last years after the corporate life kind of thing. How would you help them mm. recreate them powerfully enough that they that they create everything that they want to create in the corporate life as well mm. consciously beautiful so this is good okay well actually i just have to say that the truth of the words that are coming here uh because not what i say is the place that i come from actually i, I wouldn't help them i wouldn't help them at all because firstly, here's the thing. I'm not here to help anybody, really. It took me a long time to understand that the purpose of my life is not to help people. The purpose of my life is not to bring in a new wave of leadership. The purpose of my life is not to change the way things are done. Mm. The purpose of my life is simply to emanate the truth. Every man must find his own truth, and your own truth shall set you free. All I'm here to do is help people connect to their tr deeper to their truth. The reason why I caught myself and I said, I don't help people connect to their truth. They have to do that. But if you're somebody, if somebody is watching this conversation, guess what? They've already started. They wouldn't have found this if they had not started. There's a resonance here. Absolute law of the universe. Universal does not, the universal law does not fail. It's only man that fails to be in harmony with universal law, right? The law is if you're not in resonance with this, if somebody is watching this, there's a reason why you have found your way here. It's because there's a knock at the door to your heart and you're simply answering the call. Answering the call is making the choice of getting this far into this interview. If you're in corporate and you've been having these thoughts and you've made it this far, congratulations, you created this. You've already answered the call. You've listened to your intuition. This is proof. This is undeniable proof. If you follow what's here, if you feel called to take a day off work, and to just go call up an old friend, then go do it. You'll find something. The work has already begun. If you feel called to um, uh, have a conversation with somebody that's taken their journey and find out about what it's been like for them, what were the things that they learned, find out about it. The work has already begun. I would ask you to just tune in and ask yourself one question. Whose fire are you warming yourself on? When we're born into this life, there's a, our fire is snuffed out, right? Your inner flame is put out. What do you do? You go and you live. And because there's no inner fire, you warm yourself with little heaters, getting an A in school, getting this job title, getting a perfect relationship, being a 10-figure coach, being this person, blah, 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 blah. We, we look at all these things, right? And then you come across somebody that has this fire, this aliveness. Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's a, it's a movement. Maybe it's a movie. Maybe it's your, your new favorite game, whatever it is. But there's something that is a burning flame. And you walk past that flame and you're like, man, I'm warming myself on this fire. Steve Hardison's an awesome fire. He's alive. And guess what happens when you come across somebody like Steve, right? You see this fire that's burning. And you sit down at the campfire and you warm yourself on that person's fire. And then you're like, man, this fire is good. This person, this is a walking, talking, breathing fire. And when that person talks, guess what starts happening? Your inner flame starts coming alive. There's a fire that starts tingling inside you. But guess what? You can't keep it alive yourself. You've got to be in that thing's presence to keep your own flame burning. So what do people do? They commit themselves to other people's fire. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Maybe it just means if your fire has been snuffed out for so long, Maybe you need to spend time with somebody that has their flame alive so you can understand what it's like to be that person. But there comes a time when that flame inside you becomes your Olympic flame. It can never go out. And when it's time for you to be nourished from the inside, you will feel out of place. Doesn't matter how big the fire is, you will know you don't belong. So I just have to ask you, 
I can give you the perfect strategy to leave your job. I could, but that's not going to make you leave your job. The only thing that's going to make you leave your job is do you know there's something more? Is there something knocking at the door to your heart? Because guess what? When the mind is clear, the door to the heart is open for the soul to speak through the heart, for the mind to listen and interpret and to transmute the unseen into the seen in real time. You will know mind, body, spirit in unison. When your heart is not there, it is not there. You cannot live life homeless in your own heart. Every time you go into work, every single thing that you pour your life into, you are not spending time. You are pouring your life force into something that you never get back. It is the most valuable commodity that you have is your life force. And if you're pouring your life force every single day into something, you better make sure that that thing is pouring life force back into you and nourishing your spirit, expanding you into more of who you are. It doesn't matter if it's hard or if it's easy. If you have to go to work and you have to numb yourself to exist, you are disrespecting life itself. But guess what? It's nothing to feel bad about. If you're at that stage now, it's okay. You cannot be behind on life. How can you be behind on life? There's an analogy that you used earlier, Ranjan, about life took you in a direction. Guess what? Life is like a GPS. You don't know where you're going, but your soul right now you don't know what it looks like. It's crazy that human form thinks this is what it looks like. In fact, your soul has a destination. It's like a GPS. When you're driving on the road, it's telling you to turn right, to turn left. Sometimes you go right, you're staying in the traffic. You're stuck in traffic for like two hours. Does that mean you're behind? No, it's part of the journey. Sometimes you're like 100 Ks an hour. Sometimes you're stuck in a school zone watching, getting beaten by little school kids. Does that mean that they're better than you? No, it's just part of the journey, right? But when you're in the car, you're not like, why is it telling me to go to right? Let me look at my childhood trauma so I can turn right. No, you don't do that. You just turn right. You just trust it, right? So you are never behind. You're never truly behind. Everything is perfectly on track. Um, words are meaningless. I could sit here, talk gibberish, but when I'm speaking from a place that's alive inside me, the words might, might as well be gibberish, but they're strung together in a song that you can't help but bop to the beat to, and that is life, my friend. Every single moment, just drop in, bop to the beat, and dance your way through life. Let's not take this shit so seriously. Everything is right here. We just got to get better at dancing. Walk in the tight road. Absolutely, Devesh. Uh, you know, uh, in the process of in the process of creation of this ultimate experience, India. Uh, most people they ask me like my journey and my experience and everything. I would, uh, for the first time. In this conversation, I would like to say that maybe, you know, when we are talking about that flame and that fire, you know what, uh, Devesh, I feel that my entire life until I met Steve Harrison was, I felt it was a preparation to be in that flame. And if, if I would, if I would put the entire experience on one side, the entire creation, the process and everything on one side. On the other side, I would put the experience of the moment when he actually hugged me, the moment he landed at Mumbai. And I could feel that flame. And I was in that flame. And I, I can still feel that energy. Oh my God. Oh yes, it was, it was so beautiful. It was so divine. It was so loving. It was so caring. And I love the way he created me in that moment. And what I realized is that each one of us, every one of us are those flames. I, you have listened beautifully. I, I didn't mean to interject. Actually, I did mean to interject, but I have to say this. What you just explained to me, you have done for so many people. You told me you did that two weeks ago. What we're appreciating in the people that we look up to, we're just appreciating ourselves through them. Yes. You do the same, man. Steve, really want to acknowledge him. Without him, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yes. He's a master. You are a master just as much as Steve is as what you're, at, what you're a master at. 
you have had the same effect on other people. And the only reason you appreciated it from Steve is because he just reflected you back to yourself. You have also done that. I'm acknowledging you both. Thank you so much, Devish. And, and everybody listening to this, it's a reminder that you two are that flame. And let's keep igniting everybody's soul on this beautiful journey within. Everybody is a master. Whether they know it or not, they're aware of it or not. Everyone is a master. You just need to be available to yourself. And I join you, Devesh, in inviting everybody back home to experience themselves as that divine flame. Thank and you so, so much. Is. Yes. And so it is, my brother. Thank you. It feels good to be home in your heart, right? Yes. It feels good to be here. Every house has a house, but not every house is a home. When we show up as who we are as human beings, when we open the door to our homes, I want people to walk into the warmest, coziest fire that they've felt. I want them to come and sit down on the floor on the softest rug that they've sat on next to the big, beautiful couch, some beautiful music playing in the back. That's the energy field that we get to be. And when we are that, you can never create something that's out of harmony. When you come into harmony, you will never create anything that is out of rhythm. You will burn everything to the ground to maintain your alignment. So it is absolutely worth being present. Guess what? We're not here to define it to you. It's for you to uncover. And if you're feeling called to uncover it, I promise you it'll be worth it. You get to make the choice. Thank you, Ranjan, for just creating this space today. I love you, man. Thank you for your presence. Thank you so much, Devesh. My second declaration as part of my document is I am divine possibility and so are you. And so is everyone listening to this and part of this. Let's be that. Thank you so much, Devesh. It was a great presence and a wonderful conversation. As always, my brother, thank you so much. We'll have thank many you. more. Thank you so much. Namaste from India.